I received many comments on superchargers about how once Tesla achieve a monopoly, the prices will skyrocket. It's all a big con, a trap to get you locked in. And once you're in, Elon will rip you off. That's his entire intention. Well, Dave takes it on, looks at the reality and predicts the future of charging EVs for both Tesla and non-Tesla drivers in the UK. Tesla has always believed that nobody would be stupid enough to buy an EV, no matter how good or advanced, if it couldn't do road trips or go longer distances. So as they built cars, so they began to build the supercharger network. In the UK, I believe the first chargers actually went in before he launched the Model S. Well, some 11 years later, Tesla now operates the largest, fastest, most reliable charging network on the planet. And Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, found out only last month that the biggest challenge to Ford's success as an EV maker is the total lack of chargers, full stop. And those that are there often, or could we say usually, don't work. So why did one CEO believe he needed a massive, reliable, cheap charger network, while another, no, in fact, correct that, all other automaker CEOs passed, passed that task on to third parties, which have let them down badly? Well, to answer my own question, I believe that all the other CEOs didn't believe that EVs were here to stay, or were serious contenders, or an arrogance that they believed that all current buyers would simply stick with them from pure loyalty, and that they, as the true experts at car making, could always at any time just switch to EVs and retain their world dominance in making cars. Well, just how wrong can you be and keep your job? Or, or in the case of Herman Dees, VW's CEO, just how right can you be and lose your job? Well, charging is critical to EV adoption by the mainstream car buyers. Any new high-tech product launched will always get buyers. These are called the early adopters. They love new things and will pay a hefty premium to be the first to have one, or even prepared for the product to fail totally at some point in the future. Well, this gives new companies a boost while they set up and get to mass production where costs fall dramatically and their products become accepted by enough people to become a viable business. Most companies fail to reach this stage. The success rate is surprisingly low. And that was one reason why Legacy Auto ignored the arrival of EVs until very recently. They thought Tesla would fail. Most people forget that the first EVs in the world were not Teslas. BMW showed off a fully electric BMW 1600 in 1971 at the Munich Olympics. More recently, in the early 90s, came the General Motors EV1, which was a smash hit at the time when petrol pocket prices skyrocketed, but was instantly abandoned and all models were recalled and crushed once the fuel prices dropped again. Later, in 2000, the Toyota Prius was launched to great success as a hybrid. And then the likes of Nissan Leaf 2010, Renault Zoe 2014, VW e-Golf and e-Up also in 2014, Toyota, Nissan, Renault, VW, these were all market leaders way back in 2010. The Leaf, Zoe and the Up were compact electric cars in their time. The Zoe launched at under £20,000, albeit with a battery rental package, an extra 79 a month, and the Leaf cost around 26000 But none of them gave any thought to chargers. Well, the charger manufacturers argued among themselves as to which plug to use, and a comp compromise was finally reached in 2013 to focus on the CCS type plug. And that was later adapted to the current CCS2 format in late 2014 and finally began to be installed in cars from about 2015 when Europe made it mandatory on all chargers. The very first chargers were actually manufactured and installed by VW in 2013 and later BMW that same year. But in 2016, Ford, Mercedes, Audi, Porsche and BMW all got together and all chucked in about a quarter of a million pound to start Ionity and effectively offloaded the issue. No longer their problem. Well, having started it, the automakers had no further interest, win or lose, sink or swim, not their problem anymore. And meanwhile, Tesla Superchargers launched the V2 Chargers 
in 2016. And that came with dual plugs, one Tesla proprietary Type 2 in the UK and a CCS2 to comply with European directives. The CCS2 charging situation went from bad to worse over the next few years as huge grants were freely available for installing new CCS2 chargers, but not a penny or, or a cent for maintenance, servicing and repairs. When chargers failed or were damaged, it was just more profitable to install a new one nearby. Only a few years ago, Herman Dies, the CEO, or ex-CEO now of VW Group, went on a road trip and condemned his experience, promising huge changes, which never quite got started as he was sacked shortly afterwards for criticising VW Group on EVs. Then this year, Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, deigned to take a road trip in an F-150 Lightning and experienced for himself what every single EV driver already knew. The CCS2 charging network is a joke. Very few, not in the right place, very unreliable, slow, a huge bulky cable and plug, and sky-high prices. Now, Jim Farley coined a phrase which is so relevant today. He said, there is no such thing as range anxiety, it is charging anxiety. I agree. You see, even if your car does 500 mile on a single charge, it is useless unless you can recharge it quickly, easily, reliably and cheaply when you're out on the road. Is all this about to change? Well, yes and no. The US, with the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, again offers charger networks massive funding to install new chargers and again, nothing for maintenance or repairs. But this time, it does set minimum standards, including, for the first time, reliability and uptime. But it is possibly all for nothing. To get their hands on the funds, charger networks have to bid for the site, showing how much their charges will cost and how many and what power they intend to install. And here... Tesla enters the scene big time and destroys their competition. Tesla always have and always will manufacture their own chargers. Because they are the largest already and they have only one type of charger at any one time, they have massive economies of scale, drastically cutting the cost of their chargers. Their competitors offer a huge variety of different chargers with different power ratings, making them really expensive, even worse when the manufacturer adds on their profit margin and delivery costs. Well, second, Tesla pre-installs four chargers onto a concrete block with all wiring connections done in the factory at low cost. Then it's shipped as a finished unit to the location where it is simply lowered into place and plugged in. It's working. Estimates suggest that Tesla chargers cost around a quarter of what their competitors have to pay to build it and install it. Well, the net result is that Tesla is winning the bids for the majority of the IRA funding. Of course, they will give the best locations and the most funding to a company that will install four times as many and have a proven record of being the most reliable chargers in the world. Oh yeah, and the cheapest prices to their customers per kilowatt hour in the world as well. In order to get the funding, Tesla has been forced to give up its monopoly of only allowing Tesla cars to charge there. And while it lasted, it was a magnificent advertising and marketing tool. You don't need adverts, no marketing budget. Just build out the largest, fastest, most reliable and cheapest network in the world and people will buy your cars just to get access. Then realise that Tesla build their cars <clears throat> to be fully compatible and optimised for charging at their superchargers, and you now get the fastest charging experience. Non-Teslas plugged into superchargers take longer to charge. Full stop. But those non-Teslas can and do rely on the superchargers and pay far less for that bonus. In summary, Tesla is getting far more of the money available from the IRA and installing four times as many charges per location as the competition. They just reached 50,000 charges installed and operating, 
And most charging manufacturers elsewhere have never even produced anything like that, or certainly not a single model high-powered DC charger. So the future of DC ultra-rapid chargers around the world would be increasingly trending towards Tesla and their superchargers. Well, back to the sting in the tail. What will happen to EV charging prices? Well, way back in 2008, Tesla issued its mission statement to transition the world to 100% renewable energy by driving down costs and offering compelling products. If we take their EVs as an example, the Model S, their flagship model, now costs half in 2023 as it did on launch in 2012. Half. And now costs little more than much smaller, vastly technically inferior cars from the likes of BMW, Audi, Mercedes. Each car also makes, for them, an industry-winning profit margin. And each month, the cost of manufacturing is reduced further. The latest example is the Model 3 Refresh. It has much greater range, vastly superior features and fittings, yet costs the same as the model it replaces. Well, charging's no different. Cost of manufacture is being slashed and the price Tesla pays for its electricity is dropping faster than a lemming out for a quick run. There is no sign whatsoever of Tesla raising prices beyond the minimum needed to run the supercharger network. Indeed, Tesla has just announced it's looking to recruit a head of operations for Tesla Electric Retail UK to launch Tesla as a utility company offering fantastic deals to UK households, including hinting at offering what they offer Tesla drivers in Texas – Overnight, totally unlimited charging for just $25 a month. That is going to shake up the utility market here in the UK. Well, forget the doomsayers and, and those everything Tesla haters who will spout their usual utter nonsense. The era of, cheap, era of cheap charging is heading our way. Grab it while you can, even if it only does last a short while. Fill your boots while it does. We want to thank you for watching our long cast. Dave takes it on. And if you like what we do, what we ask of you is to click that like and subscribe to follow along. Well, thanks for watching to the end. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe so you'll be notified as we release the next. I'm Dave.